Okay, so let's do something a little bit more complicated now. In this course, you will be coming across working with three different variables. And when we need to differentiate three variables, we use something known as partial differentiation. Okay, so let's consider these three variables, temperature, pressure, and volume. How are they related? Temperature is a function of pressure and volume. And as pressure and volume change, according to this trace over here, temperature responds in a non-linear manner. And this equation effectively captures the interactive effects of both pressure and volume. So what do you do when you need to um, differentiate a equation with two different variables? Like I said earlier, you break it down. So the first thing you do is to differentiate them one variable at a time while keeping the other variable constant. And you do this by first, say for instance, I wanted to differentiate pressure in relation to temperature. Okay. I'm going to introduce you now to a new operator, something known as partial. All right. Partial T over partial P literally just tells me that you're keeping one variable constant. And in this case, it's volume. So when you keep volume constant, you can ignore BV squared. And all you have to do is differentiate AP. And the result of that differential is A, keeping volume constant. All right? And like I mentioned earlier, you can express this as a normal fraction and rewrite it as partial t over partial p, keeping volume constant, multiplied by dp. Okay, And hence, the result of that is a constant v multiplied by dp. Right? So now that you've differentiated uh, p, while keeping v constant, you have to do the same for v. You want to differentiate v this time using the partial operator to express that, okay, keeping p constant. And so you can ignore ap and only differentiate bv squared. The result of that would be 2 b v keeping p constant rewriting that as an equation it will be dt equals to partial t over partial v keeping p constant multiplied by dv which is equals to 2 b v p constant multiplied by dv and what's left is just 2 add the two together, and it will give you the following expressions. What do these expressions represent? It represents a single point in any part of this polynomial curve in three dimensions. Okay, so let's look at another example. This time, instead of TPV, it's UTV. All right. So consider this expression over here. In the same way that we differentiated one variable at a time, it can be rewritten as du is equals to partial u over t, keeping v constant multiplied by dt, okay, plus partial u over partial v, keeping t constant multiplied by dv. Notice one thing, the only change here is in the variable names. So you can apply the same operation to pretty much any set of variables that you have. And what happens when we've got, say, multiple variables? For instance, we've got t, p, n1, n2. The process is exactly the same. You differentiate one variable while leaving the other three variables constant. So for instance, here, I'm differentiating t first, 
okay, that's number one, while keeping P, N1, and N2 constant. Say, and in the second term, we are keeping, we are differentiating P, keeping T, N1, N2 constant. In the third term, we are differentiating N1, keeping T, P, N2 constant. And finally, we differentiate N2, keeping T, P, N1 constant. And you can repeat this operation for pretty much any number of variables. All right, here in this third example, I want to go through a simple rule which you will encounter quite often in this course. Let's consider, say, this equation over here where h is equal to h as a function of u, p, and v. All right. However, in this case, we actually know the function as h is equal to u plus pv. All right. What happens when we differentiate h is equal to u plus pv? Okay, let's do the straightforward one first. Okay, partial h over partial u, keeping p and v constant. So that's one, yeah? Okay, because you, do, you can ignore the p and v term. But what happens when you do, say, partial h over partial v, okay, keeping u and p constant? The answer to that is actually p. Conversely, if you've got partial h over partial p, keeping u and v constant, the answer to that is v. Hence, the expression can be written as dh is equals to du plus pdv plus vdp. All right? If you've got something like this, you can apply this rule directly. So let's imagine, say, you've got something like x is equals to kc. The differential for this can be written as kdz plus zdk. And that applies to pretty much uh, partial differentiation on any variable that's multiplied this way. So this is one of the more basic operations that we will be encountering again and again. And I strongly suggest you try and get familiar with such rules. OK, here I'm going to summarize a couple of important terms that we need to take note of and that we've exposed you to. So first of all, dx in differentiation stands for small changes in x. And I also introduced you to partial x, also called do x, doesn't matter. Okay, so partial x, okay, just means that you are keeping one variable constant, and we only use it like this. It really is uh, just notation to tell me that you are keeping one variable constant, if you don't use the partial operator and you use a small d instead of partial, as long as you've got a set of brackets, keeping one variable constant, that's also a fair way of expressing it. This over here is the lowercase delta. That's delta x. It is exactly the same as dx above, but it's for something known as a non-state function, something that we will discuss slightly later in this course. In this case, the two non-state functions are dw, delta w, and delta q. Very importantly, the uppercase delta, delta x, stands for a total change in x. That means that it expresses the total change of all the small, large, and partial changes in your expression. So this is rather important, okay? We have to understand that for any variable that is kept constant, for instance, p, okay, is a constant, then any change in p is zero. All right, let's look at one example where dh is equals to du plus pdv 
plus V D P. Assume we keep P constant. When P is constant, D P is equal to zero. Hence, we can cancel the entire term and we can explore D H is equal to D U plus P D V in isolation. Okay, here in this slide, I really wanted to uh, demonstrate how the operators can change as you move along. So let's consider partial h for partial t keeping p constant is equal to cp. Like I mentioned earlier, you can always manipulate this like a fraction by, say, bringing dt up, okay, or uh, partial t up, all right? And when you do that, you can rewrite it as dh is equal to cp multiplied by dt. However, note that even though you are keeping p constant, the partial operator has become a small d. And if you integrate the right-hand side, you can get delta h, effectively all the changes in h. Okay, um, let me try to um, explain that a little bit more to you. So consider that the expression for g, for instance, is dg, okay, is equals to v dp, okay? Now, when I integrate the right-hand side, all right, I need to specify some kind of a range, say p2, p1. The expression then changes to delta g, a large delta g, is equals to the integral between p1 to p2 of v dp, and is hence expressed as v p2 minus p1. The important thing to note about this slide is to know that the notation can change as you move along. So this is a little bit of a introduction, and perhaps to many of you, a reintroduction on partial differentiation. If you haven't gotten anything, uh, everything by now, that's perfectly okay. You will get better and better at it, and you are going to be very comfortable at it by the end of the next few lectures. Um, if you need a little bit more practice, there are crash courses available, and please feel free to look up anything on the internet or even on ChatGPT nowadays to figure out exactly how to do partial differentiation operations. So in summary, we have gone through two very important things in this introductory lecture. We've talked a little bit about the concept of work, about how work must have both a force and a displacement, and we've actually gone through a review okay, of partial differentiation and the basic operations of differentiation. And here at the end, there are a couple of acknowledgements of exactly where we got some of the sources of our images from, from the entire lecture. All right, thank you very much, and I look forward to speaking with you again in the next lecture.